with more car makers starting to recognize that the million peso price level is the sweet spot amongst today's car buyers, we can expect more and more contenders to enter this space. Now, the recent arrival of the Chevrolet Tracker further proves this point, and in this video, we get to check out the top spec Chevrolet Tracker Redline and see what it's all about. Let's do this. Hello guys, I'm Reagan and welcome back to another car review. If you're new to my channel, I hope you click that subscribe button and become part of the Reagan's Rides family. If you're my subscriber already, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Oh yeah, and click that like button. Also special thanks to Chevrolet Makati for helping us do this car review. The Chevrolet Tracker here is not the same tracker that was sold in the US way back in the 1990s. In fact, this tracker would likely not be available in the North American market anytime soon. This vehicle is meant to replace the Chevrolet Trax in the Chinese market and that's the exact same model that we get here. Now we have two trim levels, the base model LS and the top spec LT Redline that we have here. Now for this review, we'll focus on the Redline trim which retails for 1,242,888 pesos. Now that pricing puts it at the same level as the other top spec subcompact crossovers that are sourced from China. So let's see if the Tracker Redline can put up a decent fight. Right off the bat, the Tracker has design elements found in other crossovers mixed into its front fascia. While the top part of the front grille and the hood creases has that Camaro look, well, the shape of the front bumper grille reminds me of the Ford EcoSport of all things. Now, don't get me wrong guys, this is a good look especially when you pair it to these squinty LED headlight units. Now couple that with the LED DRLs that are similar in shape to the ones found in the Ford Territory, and you have a subcompact crossover that puts together all of the best design cues of its competitors to create a completely unique look. Now it's a little bit tight here, so we'll just have to make do with what we can. Now the side profile of the tracker makes full use of black plastic cladding here for that added ruggedness. Now, compared to other crossovers sourced from China, the side profile of the tracker is low-key, subdued even. Now, the lack of chrome here is noticeable, which gives the tracker a sleek and sporty look, which I must say, guys, I am liking this better. Now, to further enhance that sportiness, this top-spec redline tracker gets 17-inch blacked-out alloys with red accents, and these wheels are wrapped in 21555 R17 tires. Behind those wheels, we get four-wheel disc brakes, and for your suspension, we have a MacPherson setup in the front and a compound crank rear axle at the back, which is, well, <laughs> a fancy way of saying rear torsion beam. Now, the ground clearance is 201 millimeters, which is surprisingly high for such a sleek-looking crossover. The rear end of the Redline Tracker gets LED taillights versus the bulbs that are found in the base model LT. Now, the lighting is one of the biggest exterior differences between these two variants, save of course for the panoramic sunroof found in this Redline trim. Oh yeah, and we get a blacked out bowtie badge and also blacked out tracker badge here that also has red accents. Now, that's pretty cool. Now, the rear end of the tracker gets enough lines and creases here to keep things interesting. And uh, true to being a rugged crossover, we also get a full rear skid plate here that also houses your rear fog lamps. Now, pop open your manual liftgate and you get access to 393 liters of trunk space, which is pretty decent for a subcompact crossover. But how does that translate to luggage? Now, I have with me my medium-sized luggage here. As you can see, you can put it right there in the middle and you still have space on the sides, well, on the side for just one hand carry luggage. Now this luggage area or this trunk area has a nifty feature because the floor can be adjusted to become deeper or shallower depending on your needs. Now you can put it up on the shallow uh, format if you're going to tumble down the back seats to give you a flat cargo space. 
Now, when you tumble down that back seat, you get access to nearly 1,300 liters of cargo capacity, which, as I said, is pretty decent for a subcompact crossover. All local trackers get a solo engine option, and that's what we have here. Now, this is a one-liter turbocharged three-cylinder gasoline engine that puts out 114 horses and 175 newton meters of torque. Now, the power is sent to the front wheels via a six-speed automatic transmission. Now, looking at those uh, power output figures, it's already telling me that the Chevrolet Tracker is really meant more for leisurely commutes rather than outright power. Now, when it comes to fuel economy, well, I'd have to have more seat time in the Chevy Tracker in order to tell you guys. So just wait for that. <laughs> the cockpit of the Chevy Tracker is decent, but it's not class leading. You see, we've seen enough of these uh, Chinese source of vehicles cockpits to be spoiled about the experience. And yeah, well, this is a pretty basic cabin uh, to begin with. Now, having said that though, the Chevrolet Tracker Redline trim does give you some creature comforts and cabin features to still keep it in contention. Now we have here faux leather seats, but these uh, faux leather seats have a good quality and in fact they can even pass for genuine leather. We have contrast red stitching here and for the driver's seat we get power adjustments for the sliding function, but the seat bag will have to make do with a manual adjustment. And we also get a panoramic sunroof here, something that's already pretty much expected when it comes to these top spec uh, China source vehicles. Now, the tracker gets a leather-wrapped steering wheel here with a contrast red stitching. Now, trust me guys, this is a leather-wrapped steering wheel, although it's now wrapped in plastic. But yeah, under there, you have your leather. Now, the wheel also has uh, hands-free buttons for connectivity. But I was quite surprised to see that we don't get a cruise control. You see, most of these uh, China source vehicles have uh, cruise control features already, even in the lower models. Uh, but yeah, it's not really here. So, it's not a deal breaker, guys. But it's something that I've come to expect already so yeah still it's not here anyway the steering wheel also adjusts for tilt and it doesn't telescope which is expected from a value crossover uh, value subcompact crossover now when you look at the gauge cluster it's a it's a mix of analog uh, gauges with a colored multi-information display in the middle that shows you your vital vehicle information. Now, another thing that I'm noticeably missing here is the engine temperature gauge. You see, the multi-information display doesn't show that. So maybe it's just the Tito in me, but I am a little bit uh, wary about cars that doesn't come with an engine temperature gauge. However, this is a Chevrolet, guys. So I guess this thing doesn't really overheat. So yeah, probably probably redundant to, to put an engine temperature gauge right there. <laughs> now, you move over to the infotainment system. It's been tacked on on top of the dashboard and we have here an 8-inch touchscreen infotainment system that comes with Apple CarPlay and Bluetooth for Android connectivity. <laughs> you see, we don't get Android Auto here, which is a bit of a bummer, guys, because the other markets get Android Auto, but that's not found in the top spec red line tracker here in the Philippines. Now, when you move down to your uh, climate control system we have a fully automatic climate co control system here your shifter which is not leather wrapped uh, that connects to your six-speed automatic transmission and a couple of cup holders which we will subject to our clean canteen tests you see yep it passes my clean canteen it perfectly fits in the two cup holders of the chevrolet tracker so that's a good thing and we also have a center armrest here that's leather wrap and that's also good touch makes for some nice relaxed driving out there and a ha manual handbrake right here to complete the functions of your cockpit now when you look at the cabin materials used here well it's a uh, Pretty much a straightforward, uh, business-like uh, Chevrolet cabin. We've got some nice uh, contrast materials here. This looks like it's been wrapped in like faux leather with red uh, stitching here. But the top dashboard and the door cards and the lower dashboard are all made of hard plastic. Uh, not really a big issue, guys. This is still the value subcompact crossover space. So yeah, it's just a little bit too much on the business side. However, when you look at the fit and finish, the fit and finish is uh, as expected from a Chevy. This is uh, pretty fantastic. You don't get any ugly panel gaps here and there. And uh, yeah, overall, pretty straightforward, basic Chevrolet cabin. 
Now the Tracker may have a decent trunk space, but here in the back seat, it is 100% a subcompact crossover. Now I'm 5 foot 6 guys, and this is my driving position. As you can see, I only have around 4 inches of knee room left here, and around 3 inches of headroom. Now luckily, we have a panoramic sunroof here in the top spec red line trim, which makes the back seat a little bit airier and more comfortable. Now despite being a little bit on the tight side, you could still comfortably fit 3 adults here, because because the shape of the seat itself is pretty flat so the third uh, person in the middle won't have a, a hard time sitting here in the middle of uh, two guys now we also have a pretty low center tunnel here so that should give some decent uh, foot room for the middle passenger now despite being a uh, top spec uh, trim this uh, red line tracker doesn't get rear AC vents which is a bit of a bummer since we live in a tropical country however we do get two USB charging ports here and a center armrest that also has uh, two cup holders so those are pretty good uh, toys even in this uh, value subcompact crossover space now it's time to hop back in the driver's seat and take the chevy tracker out for a quick spin just to see how it performs on the road Alright guys, so we're now driving the Chevrolet Tracker, but this is the base LS trim. This is not the red line trim because this is the available demo unit from Chevrolet Philippines. Now, it doesn't really make a difference because the mechanicals of both the trims are practically identical so we're gonna get the same well experience if we drove the red line so right off the bat guys visibility I could already tell you that the tracker has a good amount of visibility here despite being a subcompact crossover forward visibility is really good the dashboard is not that high in fact it's mounted quite low but the belt line of the car is a little bit on the high side however the windows are large for a subcompact crossover so that should make this thing quite an easy driver now the steering feel is understandably light this is a budget subcompact crossover after all but it is not as as artificial feeling as some of the other uh, budget crossover or value crossovers out there now having said that guys it is still a very light uh, power steering system this is an electric power assist system guys so yeah it would be easy to drive around in the city and especially when you're maneuvering around in tight parking areas now for its acceleration let's see if this chevy tracker can give the geely cool ray a run for its money let's go wow all right first up guys well the acceleration okay it's not at the same level as the cool ray as i mentioned well primarily because of the power deficit the geely cool ray has gobs more power than this baby does but i love the fact that it has a six-speed automatic transmission you see this is not a cvt hence we don't get that cvt drone and that cvt lag this tracker is eager to put the power down especially when you step on the gas pedal let's try it again there you go yes it's not seat in your pants type of acceleration, but it is there. I will not say that it's anemic. I'd say that it's middle of the road. It's like it would, uh, it would be a perfectly decent uh, partner for daily driving. Uh, but if you need to put down the goods, well, it will definitely give you the goods. But not as fast as well, as I mentioned, the Geely Cool Ray. This thing is really not built for outright speed, but really more for a leisurely drive with a short burst of power whenever you're overtaking or when it is needed. Now, when it comes to the NVH and cabin comfort, well, as expected from these newer subcompact crossovers, well, the NVH is pretty decent. Granted, there aren't really too much cars on the road, but I don't hear any of the sound of the motorcycles outside and i feel like i'm pretty well insulated here of course i would need some more seat time with this thing to really assess the cabin comfort especially on a long drive or the nvh levels but preliminary impressions are pretty good overall guys what does this uh, chevrolet tracker present to you well it just gives you just enough space just enough power just enough ground clearance all wrapped together in a handsome looking subcompact crossover I mean, this is one handsome jack of all trades, although it is a master of none. 
While the Chevrolet Tracker Redline may not have as much features as the other contenders from Chinese car makers, it does offer a sleeker and sportier alternative to the offerings of other mainstream brands. And with Chevrolet's name and brand equity backing it up, it may just be that subcompact crossover that you've been waiting for. Thanks for watching.